Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Welcome to Thursday's Simply Cyber Live, the weekly show on the Simply Cyber channel where we bring in industry guests who really cross the gambit of all the different things that are cybersecurity. We're not, we're not, um, what's the word, discriminating whether or not you're offensive, defensive, or even the GRC people. And today we have a community grade. I already saw Stefan Walvogo saying, what's up? A lot of people in here, Aaron KG, Liam, I see you guys. Our man, that's right, via mesh, Zach Hill from TCM Security is going to be joining us. He's the director of sales and marketing, but you guys all know that he does so much more. He really, really cares about the community and he's just a wonderful person in general. So today we're gonna to be talking about solving the cyber education problem. What are the challenges? What is Zach seeing in his seat over at TCM Security? What's, what's going on in the macro picture? And if time allows, I'm hoping to have a little bit of a fireside chat and talk about some of the funner things and current events like all the tech layoffs, uh, what's going on maybe at Twitter, whether or not it's a good idea to become a content creator. Zach is an expert in creating content and blowing up a YouTube channel. So we're gonna get into all that. Guys, um, house rules. Questions, fire them up, drop a cue in chat in front of it so I can see it, I'll throw it to the side. We will bring your questions up. This is going to be a community engaged um, event today. So I hope you can stay with us and have a good time. Let's go get Zach. What's up, Zach? How you doing, man? I'm doing wonderful, sir. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. So, um, Zach. Quick question. I'm kind of. I'm actually kind of curious. Do you uh, do you drink beer? Is beer your it, thing? Beer is not my thing. No. Are not. you a hard liquor guy or what? I am. I do. I, I enjoy whiskey for sure. Oh really? Oh, okay. So like a like a nice uh, like blended whiskey or something like that. Or what? what what's your go to? My go to. Oh man, probably like uh, cranberry and like cranberry juice and whiskey. Like uh, mostly like crown apple. That's that's my jam for sure. Interesting. Crown apple I never... and cranberry. I never knew uh, you could mix. Uh, I always thought you just drank whiskey straight or with uh, like Coca-Cola or something like that. So interesting. I might have to try that. I'm not a big whiskey guy, but I'm willing to try something new for the first time. So thanks for that, Zach. And for those of you in chat, you know, it's Zach's mixer of the day. So, okay, hold on. I, I don't want you pushed up all that way. Hold on. We'll have to switch in and out because I the, the screen gets so small, Zach. So anyways... First things first, let's get into it. I see the questions queuing up in chat. I love it. Zach, how's working over at TCM Security? You've been there just about a year and a half now or so. I've seen you've gotten promoted. How, what's your experience like? And what what is, like, TCM is blown up as far as, like, growth. <laughs> what What's going on over there? Yeah, oh, I don't even know where to start, man. It's, uh... I feel blessed and in so many different ways, quite honestly. It's the best experience I've ever had in my entire life, um, to be honest with you. And the things that we're doing and the lives that we're changing, it's just, uh, it, it's something that I'm, you know, I, I'm obviously very passionate about, but it's mm -hmm. just, uh, I, I can't even put it into words sometimes, I feel like. Because honestly, like we're we're making a huge impact on the industry, and you know that's something that I've been trying to do personally for years, and uh, now as an organization to really be part of something that, you know, has a much larger impact on the industry as a whole is is big for me. It's just means a lot to me uh, to be part of that. Yeah, you know. and and Heath, the, Heath Adams. For those of you who don't know, he's the guy who runs TC. He is TCM. You know. <laughs> um, you know, he he's very open and transparent about how he wants to grow. I mean, the whole fact that the classes are twenty nine ninety nine in, intentionally to kind of shake up the current system, which might be one of the problems with the you know the education problem itself. But so it, it's about being affordable, right? I mean, we want to be affordable. We want we want everybody to be able to, um, you know, learn. Like education should be affordable, and you know, Heath and and everybody here at you know TCM, like we do the best job that we can to make sure that, you know, we're as affordable as we can and we're giving people, you know, the like the real information that they need to be helpful in a career. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's not that's something that not a lot of organizations can do at an affordable level. And, you know, something that, that Heath just put on LinkedIn just recently, like we've never taken a dime in funding. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first started there at TCM Security last September, I was the third person uh, that was hired for the company and that was including Heath. And now um, we're just hiring our 15th 
person. So number 15 uh, in the past year. And that's so just all organic growth on our end. Oh, that's um, fantastic. That That's really, and, and, and I, you know, I myself, some of you, I, I know many of you are simply cyber community members. I mean, I, my GRC course is up on TCM security um, as well, because I believe in that company and I believe in the people that work at that company. So I, I love it. But so taking a step back now that you've been working basically at a cyber education company for over a year, you know, what, what, are, what are the problems that you're seeing, right? And then I want to talk about how we, we might solve them. But what are like the recurring problems? And in chat, if these problems are problems that you have or are encountering, I want to hear it in chat. But what, what are the main kind of the, the main problems you're seeing? It's like, where do you start sometimes, you know? I feel like everybody, you know, I, I'm constantly watching social media and hearing what people are saying and getting feedback, right? And it's all across the board, right? But I think... Uh, the the biggest issue that people are running into especially like trying to break into security is you know experience having experience it's really you know it's holding people back and how do you get experience how do you get the experience that you need for some of these positions in the field you know and um you know some of that just takes time some of that just takes like breaking into an entry-level role and working your way through some of it is just like you really have to go through a grind and start learning and going through different, you know, educational platforms and getting different certifications and things like that. But really, I, I think what the, the biggest thing is, is, you know, uh, the industry as a whole, I think, and this goes across the board, we've done a lot in, in marketing and saying, hey, like we have all of these open jobs in cybersecurity and we need to fill all of these jobs. And then you get all these educational companies who come in and say, okay, yeah, we can do this and we can help you. and you know, we, we, we can, you know, take you from nothing and get you to like a cybersecurity job. But, um, you know, when you go through different programs and things like that, you know, if you don't have prior experience, like you're at somewhat of a disadvantage because what we're, you know, what you see in just about every single entry level cybersecurity job and, you know, every cybersecurity job is that, um, you know, they want to see people with experience, right? So like, your competition, even even if you're just graduating from college with a cybersecurity degree, your competition, even for an entry level cybersecurity job, like 99.9% .9 of the time is going to be, you know, somebody who has experience like that person's already been working in IT for quite some time, like they might be like a system administrator or network engineer, but like, they're interested in cybersecurity and cybersecurity often pays more money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like you can go out and get the degrees and certifications and things like that. But, you know, keep in mind, like your competition often, especially in cybersecurity, already has some type of experience, you know, and they're trying to make this transition into this field. So a lot of the problems that we're having, you know, like people that are having, like trying to break into this industry is like, how do you set yourself apart? How do mm -hmm. you, be, you know, stand out from the crowd, you know? And we can yeah, absolutely. And I mean, BSEC here says that, you know, cyber isn't even entry level to start off, which, which, you know, I could have a healthy debate, but it's, it's not 50, 50 on the debate. I mean, he's, he does have a solid point that a lot of times people pivot in from it because cybersecurity is protecting something from doing something it shouldn't. But if you don't know what it's supposed to do the right way, it's very difficult to understand how to manipulate it or it, recognize that it is being manipulated. So that that's a good point by BSEC. Um, I would agree. And I also, yeah, there's, uh, there's so many different arguments to be said there because, you know, even still, like, even though, you know, your, your competition is going to be these people who have years of experience, like there's still people who go through like a boot camp or, and that's very rare. I have to like really emphasize that. And there's people who graduate from college and they start off and get a cybersecurity job, but that's very, very rare that that happens. And you also have to like, keep in mind and really pay attention to like, what that person actually did to get that job or, you know, was it somebody that they knew? Right. And that's, I think we're like, we can go into a whole thing about personal branding, which I just did a video on my YouTube channel about like last week where I, I featured you on there also, but like Me? getting, get, yeah, you, I, <laughs> okay. I don't, I, I won't take offense. Don't worry. I've, no, no, no. Okay. I mean, good. I wish but, I had known. I would have. No, it's it. all good, man. No, 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 it's fine. It, but the point, the, just the point of it is, is like, Hey, we're like, if you're trying to like break into these any field really in it or any field at all really like get out on linkedin get out on social media because that's really what's making the biggest difference nowadays and that's where people i think are seeing the most success because they're able to connect and network with people like they weren't 
they were never able to before. The internet is a really amazing tool sometimes. It, it absolutely is. And, you know, there's a really good question in here that I just flagged. And then you, you said the, <laughs> you said the, the video thing. And uh, I want to bring this up. So Jordan is about to graduate in six months with a bachelor's in cyber. And I, he, he or she does not feel ready. Now, I want to point out something. I, I teach um, undergrad at the Citadel uh, Military College, okay? And I told these kids this yesterday. And I spoke at UGA last night, actually. And I told that student body this. I, and it kind of echoes what you said, Zach, and I love your thoughts on this. Just getting a degree, like a bachelor's degree, it, like, yes, I applaud you, and I know it's four years, and, or typically, and it, and it can be difficult, and it's a slog, but it's, it's not enough. Like, you can't, like, when I graduated with a computer science degree, I thought I was going to just be beaten back offers, and like, you know, like, why wouldn't they want the cat's meow? I, I got this computer science degree. And it's it's not enough, especially in cyber. So for someone like Jordan, I would say, hey, listen, you know, you've got to do the, the BS degree, obviously, but you need to start doing like like ranges, like try hack me or hack the box or um, world of haiku or getting a uh, practical experience like uh, TCM Security's PNPT path, which we can look at in a few minutes. But like you, you have to do things that are differentiate you as a candidate because everybody's got you know everybody that's getting that degree is going to be going for the same you know jobs um and then and then one other thing that i i say can, quite I, a can, bit. I, can i can i just i just want to interrupt in, go, yeah, on that ahead. really quick because one thing you like people have to keep in mind with like doing all these different labs and things like that is making sure that they're making that you know publicly available like sharing that they're doing yeah. these labs or yep. doing write-ups and things like this because when you're applying for jobs i promise you the very first thing that somebody's doing when they've like looked at your resume and they've identified you as a potential candidate they're looking you up online and they're seeing what you're doing i do that every single time we, you know we we are hiring for somebody yep. we're looking up online and i've done that for years but that's really what people are doing nowadays. They want to see who you are, what you're doing, what you what you have to offer, right? And one of the great things that you can do with you know your name when people are, are you know, looking you up online is like have a GitHub that's associated with your name, have some type of blog that's associated with your name, and share and document you know these different things that you're doing. Absolutely, and I mean that parlays perfectly. I also want to say what's up to Jeffrey from UGA. I told all the UGA uh, students to come on over here. Uh, today. But to, to, to your point, another thing that I said just this morning, you could be the best student. You could you could be grinding in the lab at, at school, you know, extra hours late in the lab. You get valedictorian of the entire university with a computer science, a, a cybersecurity degree and someone who gets like a 3.0, not bad, but not the valedictorian. Right. But there's instead of spending all the time in the lab and working into the nights and stuff like that, they're actually out there working on their LinkedIn, going to conferences, meeting people, being a guest on a podcast. Right. That person is going to I'm not saying that they're more qualified for the job, but they are more likely to get the job than the person who knows everything because nobody knows that they know everything. And that is another piece that. Honestly, I was very simple minded when I was in college. I thought we lived in a meritocracy where if you did the best, you would get the best opportunities. And it's just not true. It, it's networking is so important that I, I probably should have a sound effect for it, frankly, because I say it so often. So I, I think that really leans into what you're saying also, Zach. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pivotal nowadays. I mean, it's it's night and day, honestly. Yeah. So uh, a couple of questions from chat. Uh, by the way, chat, you guys are awesome. I, I love the Simply Cyber community. They're always uh, bringing it strong. Um, Aaron, Aaron KG, uh, featured in the Simply Cyber video. Thanks again, Aaron, for that. He wants to know how TCM classes specifically stack uh, for hiring managers. I think, you know, how, how, is, how are the classes? How is the coursework being perceived? Yeah. Um, so the, the, the classes specifically won't correlate with that, but our PMPT certification, that's the practical network penetration tester certification. Mm -hmm. um, that is, you know, probably the most practical hands-on uh, penetration testing certification on the market. Um, it is definitely gaining more ground for sure. We're getting on more and more job listings um, week by week, it seems. So it's definitely being seen by more people. Um, if you take a look at um, Maybe on the main page of the that site there, I don't know. It, it'll show like some of the different organizations and stuff that have like you know used our certification or this site know. right here. Uh, I mean, the, this... there. Um, 
Uh, it might be on the, the regular TCM one, but it's all right. Um, okay, okay, sorry. We've had a lot of different organizations, um, you know, come through and and use our training for their to teach their uh, their teams. So um, overall, I mean, we're finding a lot of success with it. And like I said, it, it, each month I think we're getting at least on one or two more job applications than the previous month. So. Yeah, I mean, that's fantastic to see, you know, that, that is fantastic to me. That's a direct response from the market, recognizing the value of what that education was. I will say one thing that uh, to not sell TCM uh, security courses short, um, Zach said the courses may not help you, but the PNPT does. I would agree the PNPT does have huge value. But from from a experience and practical perspective, I've personally taken the OSINT course and the practical ethical hacking course, and you get a lot of hands-on skills. So those can be transferable or translatable into resume bullets um, if done correctly, right? So you can you can beef up your resume a bit. You know, you're not going to say practical ethical hacking course completion because no one is going to know what that means. But if you actually distill out the education and the transformation that you got, I think that would have value. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, if you're looking at it from that that perspective, I'm glad you brought that up because I wasn't looking at it from that angle. That's hundred percent accurate. So for sure, the courses will definitely help um, because I think more so than anything, our courses are trying to focus on more so uh, on that practical aspect of what people are actually doing in a penetration tester job, right? Like mm -hmm. we're actually showing people the, the actual tools and teaching them the, the methodologies that, you know, our penetration testers at TCM are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. That's kind of what our courses are based around, you know, like real world experience. Like this is what you're going to see out in the real world. So you need to be learning these things. So uh, that's what we do. I think that the best job of really focusing on. I love it. And Aaron just has a follow up. I do. I do see all everybody's questions. I've got them flagged. But since we're talking, I want to carry on. He wants to know if it'll help with blue in addition to red. I have some it, thoughts on that, but you are the, the you know, you you do work there. So what do you think about that? I, I get we you know we get this question a lot and I'm going to say 100 percent of the time. Yes, every 100 percent. Our certifications or training will help you on that blue side because you know, you're learning the methodologies and tactics and tools that, you know, these, you know, potentially like bad actors are using to uh, infiltrate your network. So what better way to really, you know, know how to defend that than to get firsthand experience doing, you know, doing it from the opposite end, you know, you'll have a better understanding of what you, the work that needs to go into uh, or the steps you need to take to uh, protect your network. Yeah, and and um, you know TCM Security has ex expanded their course offering, including GRC courses, mind you. But they've included they've expanded their course offering, and Matt Kiley actually has a malware analysis and triage, or practical malware analysis and triage. There's also a practical Windows forensics course in there. So there are specific blue side. Um, training from from really really qualified instructors so you know I, I i genuinely appreciate that because it does give opportunity um for people who really want to focus on the blue but but zach is 100 percent right if you understand how the offense does it you're better you can have better appreciation to understand what to look for on the blue side which is essentially yeah. what pur purple team purple teaming has has become in, in a certain way uh yeah, i want to Go There's ahead. not a lot of good uh, blue team content out there, you know, and I, I think every day somebody's asking us, when are you guys going to have more blue team content? And, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, a lot of the courses that go onto our platform are from instructors submitting them. So if anybody out there has an idea for blue team content and you want to submit that to TCM security, please reach out because we would love to have some more of uh, more blue team content on our platform for sure. Absolutely. Um, so Carrie had a question for you, Carrie, longtime uh, community member. He wants to know what course uh, do you think could help him launch into a career? Um, and he he follows it up with he'll just keep studying too. So uh, any any particular direction, I guess. Um, and I'm not sure what Carrie's and you know end role is uh, per se, but um, any particular course you might suggest as a starting point. I I guess yeah I would need to know more information on what they're looking to do and where they're at and where they mm -hmm. want to be headed but if it's just like generally trying to get into IT and figure that out I always recommend people like the CompTIA A plus it's a kind of a it's like the only foundational like certification right now uh, but TCM security is working on a practical 
Um, it's a practical help desk course, and uh, I'm super stoked about that. So that would be yeah. something potentially coming out that I will be, well, that definitely will be something I will be recommending to people going forward. Um. I also want to say like good call on that because I know K Carrie's a member of the community. He got his A plus or I, I guess A plus has two parts now. Apparently, I didn't know that, uh, but yeah. So he got the first part and he's he's ready um, to uh, go on to that second part. So let, let's keep going. Uh, B sec just wants to know that uh, f uh, flavored uh, whiskey is kind of uh, crazy. So he, he's losing his mind on that one. Uh, kind of a callback from earlier. Yeah, flavored, yeah, flavored whiskey, man. Uh... Uh, who, who did I, I can't crown. So crown, they do a lot of different flavored whiskeys. They have like crown peach. I got like a crown salted caramel the other day, which was actually pretty good. Uh, but crown apple is my go-to. That's my favorite. But they have like know. peanut butter whiskey and stuff too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, Anthony wants to know, you know, uh, do you think there should be a skill chain where you basically start as a sock analyst and move into different roles or should anyone be able to train into any specific roles? Now, I, I do want you to answer that as best you can uh, and, and, and bend it from a uh, cyber education perspective, if, if you'd like, since we're really focusing on cyber education. And I'm happy to uh, weigh in on this question as well. I, I can... The easiest answer for this is that I wish IT had apprenticeships. I wish we went with an apprenticeship model uh, for the entire industry, quite honestly, mm -hmm. because that makes the most sense. So that I really that would answer that question. Like, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I say that all the time. It, it like and again, that that actually kind of weighs into the fact that we talk about how practical experience is so valuable. Right. Do you want an electrician that just read a book on how to be or excuse me do you want do you want a chef making you dinner who just read a cookbook or do you want a chef who went and studied at you know wherever like you know at a restaurant <laughs> yep. right yeah perfect example uh, i've been like trying to get like the apprenticeship thing going for like years but what kind of pushback it, it, are you getting on that oh no i mean you just have to that's one of those things where you just have to get the buy-in from the right people right like the right people have to see that so like the more people like us talk about something like that you know mm -hmm. hopefully the the right people say see that and say yeah that might be a, an all right idea or you know some organization might come around and be like yeah we want to help support that right because quite honestly like that's how how do we really train people the best that we can how do we really get people prepared for these positions well we find whoever's like interested right and we actually take them through day to day like this is what you're going to be doing and these are the things that you need to be knowing hands on like every step of the way, actually learning the things you need to do to do the job, just like plumbers, electricians, and, you know, <laughs> mill rights and pipe fitters, like they all have to do that because it's very specialized, just like almost every single job in IT, right? It's very specialized. And that's even specialized to the specific organization because one help desk position in one organization is going to be completely different in another organization. The same thing can be said for a pen tester position, right? Like mm -hmm. it's going to be different, like organization to organization. So it's like more if more organizations had some type of apprenticeship model, it's obviously more geared towards, I guess, larger organizations. But, you know, colleges need to be working more towards this and working with some smaller uh, businesses within their communities to offer some type of apprenticeship programs for those, uh, you know, the, you know, students and people looking to get in the field. It's a great opportunity for a lot of people. It's funny. It's funny you say that. Like, I agree a hundred percent. And the pushback I've always heard is like, oh, InfoSec has so much access and it ha it deals with a lot of sensitive stuff. We, we, you know, and we're, we're already like limited. So like limited in manpower or person power um, to be able to, to commit to the apprenticeship. But at the same time, Right. Like I think electrical is pretty serious and there's a junior person standing at my fuse box, you know, maybe with somebody, but you know, it, it works in other industries. So I think that that argument that I've heard falls down under inspection. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think there's so much involved in getting a process like that started. And I've honestly, I've thought about it for year, like years, just like all the things that would have to be done, but you know, um, it can be done. Like it's something that I think can be done and it should be done to really um, help the industry as a whole, you know? I love it. Yeah, gaming with the cats and electrician, 
and uh, came came on just that way with the apprenticeship. Love it. And and also just as a shout out, I don't know about if you know this, Zach, but I've started a series, um, and I've kind of like gone like you know full bore into it where i'm reaching out and finding people that work in cyber that came from somewhere else so like i've got stay-at-home parent to cyber truck driver to cyber gaming with the cat if you want to do electrician to cyber let's roll um or i'm not sure if gaming with the cat's in cyber yet or is trying to get in but but my point is um it, it's this series of videos and it's 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 a lot like uh, what we're talking about here how do you get the education how do you get the experience what was the lessons learned and stuff like that because uh, you know different industries have different different needs frankly right yeah everybody's um, path into, into uh cyber security has been so different and i love hearing people's stories on that because they they have been unique you know it's not there's no cut and paste method to get into it or to get into any position within or a subset of IT. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. we have some really good uh, comments in here. BSEC says that, you know, he sees a lot of people want to pivot, but that they don't want to take the pay cut. Um, and that becomes that becomes uh, a deal breaker for them. And, and I can see that, right? I mean, if, if you're like 25 years deep or something like that, but cyber does pay pretty well. I mean, you're not going to become a, you know, Peace Corps or something like that. Yeah, I mean, if you're, it definitely can be harder when you're pivoting from a different career, you know, if, you, and if you're at a certain level within that career, right? Yeah. Um, it, it really depends on what that position is, you know, but I think there's ways that you can utilize like whatever your prior career is um, towards your advantage and in getting into a, a completely new field, right? Because you just have years of experience doing whatever it is that could potentially offer something new to the table that's going to be helpful, right? So it's, you know, but it's like, how do you also back up that like you're going to bring that cybersecurity experience to the table? So you're going to have to go out and definitely put in maybe a little bit more work and getting some certifications or going and getting a degree if you can and things like that. It's it's not easy sometimes for people to do a complete career um, transition. You know, it's really not. It can be difficult. Um, and it, what do you say about that? You know, what do you do? It's just everybody's going to have a different experience and everybody's going to have to do something different, right? Follow yeah. a different path. And that's and the great thing about IT and cyber in general is just like there are plenty of different paths to take and you're not limited. So find what works best for you. And good yeah, luck. I, I agree 100%. And like that's one thing that I, I like, I don't think a lot of people don't know this, but I don't think they realize it. Like working in, like you have, it's, you have to constantly be doing it right like you can't you can't like get the cissp and then be like all right i'm just gonna chill and like get my job like it is a job that is demanding um so it, i might tr I, I might get triggered on this one uh zach uh -oh. so i'll let you take it first okay uh -oh. but we're talking about apprenticeships professor black ops wants to know if boot camps are the instant version of apprenticeships nope it's a waste of money it's a complete waste of money like I could, I could go in a complete tirade for a long time on this, and it's something that upsets me a lot. But yeah, I think boot camps are just a scam. Sorry. I agree. No, no, no. I mean, that's why I would get triggered the, the same as you, man. I, it, it's to me, it's exploitative, right? I mean, I've seen some boot camps, but they're not really boot camps. They're like a like a fifteen month condensed course where you're just taking like, you know, like that's not a boot camp. Like a six week or a four week or two week learn cybersecurity. What well, all they, they charge you like $10,000, which is obnoxious. And then more than that, a lot of times too, even, uh, but then they'll, they'll be like, like, here's all the things you'll learn. And you spend like 10 minutes on like something. And then you go on to the next something and whether you got it or not is irrelevant to them. They are meeting the obligations that they, uh, you agreed to. And yeah. it's, it's definitely a change between, um, uh, you know what your assumed expectations are and what their their minimum required deliverables are uh and in that big gray area is the problem so please i i really like i've yet to find a boot camp that did something you know well there's i think the only time they get a boot camp can be justifiable and it really like quite honestly is when you are not paying for it when your company is paying for it because mm -hmm. that boot camp is only like you know a couple weeks long and it specifically is focused on one thing right it, it's really trying to get you skilled up in like one area right not just like trying to cover cybersecurity as a whole it's like hey we're 
in the, these few weeks, like we're really going to dive into like malware analysis, right? Like that's all we're going to cover for those few weeks. A very specialized boot camp. Um, those types of things I think can be good. Um, but those are for like people who are already working in the industry, right? But like these boot camps that are around that are like, hey, this is, you know, we're a cybersecurity boot camp and we're going to teach you everything that you need to know yeah. to get into cybersecurity. And that's really, and if you look at the marketing to that too, right? Uh, a lot of it is what, where they say that specifically, like, hey, we're going to get you into cybersecurity. What does that even mean? Yeah. Like, right? What does that even mean? What's cybersecurity? Like, and you, you, like, these people can't even define that. Like, and the people who are going through these boot camps at the end of that can't even define that because they don't even know what roles they're qualified for, right? Because, like, that mm -hmm. boot camp at the end of the day isn't really specializing you in anything. It's just kind of like, it's just like vomiting all this stuff at you like yeah so sorry yeah, well, i don't want to keep no, no, going no, it's good it, it's no it's good it's good and uh you know like when someone says they want to work in cyber security to me you know the how, uh, you know jerry can you help me i want to work in cyber the, the question is well what do you want to do because that's gonna that's going to influence and determine what the answer is out of my mouth there isn't a one size fits all we are seeing some uh interesting things uh, in chat, uh, talking boot camps is actually a hot thing. BSEC wants to boot the boot camps. But um, um, Anthony Smith here is plugging level effect. And then, we, you know, uh, level effect always. We actually saw someone else come in here and say, uh, Maloj, um, or Malu, sorry, uh, said uh, they did a good job. Carrie did a VA boot camp. Um, the VA paid for, so kind of along that and helped him with his A+. plus. So um, I guess... They're not all bad, but but I would say uh, so, uh, the majority the, is. <laughs> well, the the most successful people that you're gonna find that come out of any type of boot camp, especially when it relates to IT, the most success you're gonna see are from people who already have been working in IT, right? Mm -hmm. So like if you're trying to think of a boot camp and you have no prior IT experience, it's going to be very very difficult for you. But the people who already have had experience working in IT who go through a boot camp will have more success i i can tell you this for a fact that's a good point that is a good point now we got a, a question here uh, i want your thoughts on this and i want to share this really interesting resource with everybody as well and and by the way i see everybody um who chimed in with like medical biology to cyber marine to homemaker to student to cyber uh massage therapist to cyber health director so there's a lot of great stories out there and there's a lot of um you know you know unique journeys so there's a question here. Um, so look at this website. I don't know if you've seen this, Zach. This is layoffs.fyi. Layoffs.fyi. And, um, and you can go there right now. That's the URL. And they basically just keep track of tech companies and their layoffs. And you can see Roku just laid off 7% of their staff. Um, I'm sure Amazon's right here. Yeah, Amazon, 10,000 people. Uh, only 3% of their staff. Cisco, 5% of their staff. So there has been a pretty sizable layoff trend going on as the recession begins hitting, as inflation goes up. Um, I, I know you've you've seen it, Zach. Uh, Sean, uh, or, uh, excuse me, Shane asks an interesting question. Do you think all these IT layoffs are going to result in people trying to transition into cybersecurity? <laughs> um i mean you can't i mean sure that could potentially happen right like you're you're gonna just the entire industry is going to see this huge influx of uh new applicants for any open position right now so you know literally like all these positions that are currently open for you know right now like more layoffs that happen you're gonna have a lot more applicants for those positions you're gonna have a lot more competition right um so is cybersecurity going to be affected by that I'm sure because I'm sure some of these layoffs are going to be people within, you know, cybersecurity, um, you know, teams for those companies. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I would I would also offer to say um, and this is based on reality. My my, you know, 20 years of experience. Infosec, like the business doesn't really understand the difference between Infosec and IT and they need their computer to work. They need their email to work. If, if InfoSec doesn't show up and nothing bad happens, it feels okay. So I would say that cyber security is probably being categorized, you know, kind of generally in this um, 
in this layoff uh, uh, categorization over here. And we're seeing cyber teams get laid off all over the place. I think Twitter like fired their whole cyber team. Like there was some company recently that just like laid off all of the, <laughs> their uh, information. Pa Patreon security. did. Yeah. yeah they, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, so, um, you know, InfoSec is a cost center, guys. And it's very difficult for, um, I, I call it InfoSec, but it, it's, it's if you're new here, like cybersecurity, information security, InfoSec, cyber, they're all translatable um, or transferable. Um, InfoSec is a cost center. So all you look like is a liability to the That's organization. That's all IT in general, man. <laughs> yeah. But right? the thing is with IT, you know, my computer breaks, you fix it. I can see the value prop of my investment. With with InfoSec as a cost center, the better you're doing, the less it looks like you're doing anything. And that's a really difficult hill to climb up. Um, but anyways, you know, <laughs> so that's 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 the thing. Um, yeah, BSEC does work in IT. He, he's your uh, your brother in uh, Zach. So he, he's he's shouting that he's also a cost center, uh, no doubt. Um, loving the conversation here, guys. Uh, appreciate everybody in chat dropping some really great questions. Um, yeah, so I was, I was looking at the, the layoffs.fyi. It's just crazy, man. But, you, it, you know, like it, it, we've seen this before. You see this all the time. You know, uh, I think if there's any industry that's going to bounce back, it's definitely like IT. And that's simply because everything runs on technology nowadays. So, mm -hmm. I, I just don't see, you know, like, I just don't see there ever being a problem with IT. And, like, people, I get so worried, like, oh, my gosh, automation is going to take over all these jobs. Well, guess what? We still have, like, we still have the individual person to deal with. And individual people, like, they really know how to screw things up. And <laughs> AI, there is no amount of AI that can fix that right now. And yeah. for the foreseeable future. So, they're trying to no solve for what, it. Like, <laughs> they're trying to solve for it with AI, but it's it's proving difficult. Yeah, I saw some company shilling some AI help desk thing, and it's just like what? Like mm -hmm. this is just getting absurd at this point. It's getting out of control. So turning it back to uh, PNPT, since that's a big one, uh, does it is it prepare you for OSCP, or can you speak to how PNPT and OSCP relate to each other? Um, so they're both, um, penetration testing exams. Um, the OSCP is very much more, it's more oriented as like a capture the flag type of, uh, certification exam. Mm -hmm. You have 24 hours to go through that exam. And again, it's very much like a capture the flag experience where the PMPT is more practical and you have five days to complete that exam. Um, and I say it in a practical sense because you're not capturing any flags. You're actually trying to hack our network and get domain access. Like that's your goal. So you go through, you have five days to complete this exam, just like you would in like a real penetration test. You have like, you know, a set amount of time, a decent amount of time to do the things you need to do to hack our network, right? And once you go through and you, you get access to our network, you then have two days to write a report and say, hey, this is what we did or this is what you did to you know get into our network and you detail that to us you submit your report once you submit our, your report you then schedule a 15 minute debrief where you talk with somebody one on one and walk them through what you did to get into you know our network so it's it's very much like this is what you're going to see in the real world you're going to have you know the five days more than likely you might have a couple of weeks maybe you may have three or four days to, to complete um like a penetration test but you know mm -hmm. once you go through and you find vulnerabilities or whatever you write a report you give that report to you know that organization that hired you and you present to them and say you know this is what this is what we found and this is what you can do so it's very much again like real world from start to finish and there's nothing out there like that right now that is even close to that yeah I mean, it's basically your first pen testing gig. That's what yeah, it is. It really is, truly. Yeah, it really gives you like it gives you a real taste for it, for sure. I love it. Uh, Josh Mason wants to know what's happening with the new version. Are you guys working on an update to uh, PNPT or some of the coursework? Yeah, so we're we're updating the exam right now. Um, we're going to have like a one point five version of the exam where we're. we're I'm um, going to have like different environments that people can access. Um, so right now we're, we're trying to launch a completely new backend platform um, where users can 
basically control their entire exam environment from you know the cloud essentially um so that's we're hoping to get that done by the end of this year um and that's yeah that's that's gonna be super exciting for i think everybody because it's gonna really make a, a much more exciting experience and easy experience for people um but with the with like the 1.5 like exam uh we're just updating a lot of the materials and we're gonna give like so for each exam um you'll have like a random um encounter right so it's not going to be the same exam every time so if you like you fail it the first time the next time you go back you might get a completely different experience so um, oh, that is very cool yeah so we're really trying to, to step up our game and um you know make things more exciting and, and enjoyable and maybe a little bit more challenging for people as well um but you know all of the material to pass the pmpt is on our platform you know there's mm -hmm. five courses that make up the material for that we're updating some of those courses like Heath just put out an update for python um all the there's all like all brand new material in the practical ethical hacking course for python so like there's just lots of stuff coming. yeah just so you know you just made a commitment to have it out by the end of the year people are grabbing I the audio clip uh, Heath already did that he that's already on social i don't have to worry <laughs> about it he he so did it before i did so just to kind of continue the conversation so you get the pnpt you know what would you recommend a junior pen tester who grabs it uh what do they do next what do they get another cert do they do they specialize in some specific technology stack yeah i mean there's definitely options you can take and then it, right now like we don't have anything that's available for that so like oscp or not oscp but offensive security definitely has some more advanced options right more advanced options currently um even like e-learn security i think has something that's like you know just a, a little bit different like a or it focuses more on you know different things but i think a lot of the different uh, certifications that are out there uh after the pnpt will help you focus more on specific technologies and things like that um you know like there's like more advanced like wireless hacking and things like that or of course you can go off and get like your cissp and um that can be helpful as well but when it comes to just penetration testing you know on Probably Randy, right? yeah, Randy's got a great question here because um, it might it's it it might not be obvious. I mean, do you need five years of experience? Should you be a pen tester? And this this is like the CISSP that legitimizes you as a professional, or could you be a fifteen year old in high school and bang this thing out? Uh, I mean, I think we have had that already. So yeah, I th and then I think the oldest person that took it, that went through our training was like seventy six years old. Um, but yeah, I mean, anybody can go through it because I think Heath does a phenomenal job of walking you through. And that's kind of the thing that's that really, I think separates a lot of what we do um, from from other organizations is like, you can really sit down and follow along with Heath, you know, every step of the way. And you'll, you'll understand kind of what you're doing. You're not gonna have like all of that prior knowledge, but you could definitely follow along and do it. Um, but having past experience definitely is recommended um, and not necessarily just experience working in the field it could be like maybe you went through your like comp ta plus or network plus security plus and things like that so you have some prior knowledge of how some of the fundamentals of, of it work and operate um and i think once you have some of that knowledge it's going to be much easier for you to go through something like um like the pmpt um but it's definitely i don't think it's some an entry level cert by any means yeah i mean you definitely have to put in a lot of work um to be able to get it whether you go through courses or you've been in industry and you've seen these things mm -hmm. i i will um i will say if you have not taken a heath adams course specifically so tcm security has a bunch of courses heath teaches some of them heath's like his voice like his delivery and his i mean i'm not into asmr but but like he's got a very like soothing mollifying voice that he's just like okay so now it's almost like he's like techno bob ross you know what i mean he's like uh we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna hack some beautiful trees right here that's so funny i, I did a, a meme of that that i put on social that's funny you say that oh i didn't um, i'm sorry i wasn't i wasn't uh stealing that i, I didn't so, know you did that just to bring something up like i like i've watched heath's content before i even started working for him right so like yeah. but like i always had his stuff on like one and a half speed or like two times speed so like when I started working with him and I had to like get on a call with him, <laughs> it was so weird to hear him talk normal because I was so used to listening to his videos at like a faster speed. I was like, dude, are you okay? Like, <laughs> you right like today? suffer a head injury or yeah, something? Yeah, like this is really weird. And I'm like, oh no, it's because I, yeah, I watch all the videos and 
two times. That's awesome. Speed or whatever. That's Techno funny. Bob Ross. People are liking Techno Bob Ross. Uh, so yeah, Josh. I saw a couple of questions about uh, TCM sales. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll pull those up. Uh, let me oh, see. No, I was going to say next week. You guys already know. Yeah, next week. Y'all know what next week is, right? I mean, if you're not from the, the States, you may not know. Mm -hmm. But there's a fairly large holiday coming next week. And there may or may not be discounts coming. So yeah, set set your set your calendar uh, to that. Uh, absolutely. So Anthony Smith, not a crazy question, man. Not a crazy question. Uh, we did have another question in chat, which I you know I would be remiss to not uh, share. Josh Mason asks, "Don't you have a course on TCM, Jerry?" Well, as a matter of fact, I do. This here is the GRC Analyst Masterclass. You may have seen it on Simply Cyber's uh, School Teachable, but I'm very, very happy, very, very proud to have it over on TCM. I got one of these cool logos, uh, which I need to get a shirt. I don't know if we put these on shirts, but I'd love to walk around and represent with one of these. So yeah, if you're interested in GRC um, and you're already, you, you, you know, a really funny thing, Zach, um, that, oh, let me, where, I gotta bring you back. A funny thing, uh, when I put it on the course, um, people collect TCM courses like they're Pokemon cards. <laughs> so you know? what, yeah, when I was at, when we were at Deadwood, right? Uh, yeah somebody came up to me and, and told me that They're like she was like you know i love your courses and i love when you put out new stuff and like i, I think she says i'm like i've been able to afford all the time but she's like i just got to collect them all because i just want to i want to have all of those those logos i was like that is so cool that is the coolest thing to me like i love that i'm, I'm that's glad that that's, that's been like started and i never saw that coming so it's so cool to see that yeah, no, well, and I mean, the graphics are wicked cool. I, I got to tell you, even as a content creator, when I like, so for those who nobody would know this, but like, you know, I talked to Heath uh, and like, all right, let's do this. And then I like did the, the logistics and the transactional stuff with Zach. And I was like, Zach, I need, I want to get one of those gra like that, like that. I was almost more geeked up about getting one of these logos. You were, you were. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, it was awesome though. I mean. It, it's it's a really really cool it's really really cool uh you can see here people in chatter you know like identifying like hi my name is lisa and i'm addicted to tcm you know <laughs> adam's in line TCM. too yeah yeah, that, yeah that absolutely you know it, I, like people you know especially like lately especially in the last few months like how with everything that we are doing right like how does tcm become how do we become so successful and you know like what have we done and what's the secret what's the secret sauce right and it's just the community um it's it's you right it's that individual it's, it's like we care about the community and we care about helping people and i think mm -hmm. that like shines through and everything that we do so you know i when i see like lisa saying tcm is addicting like that affects me emotionally because that's what I'm here to do. I am here to to make sure and, and help people. And hopefully, you know, they have these feelings, you know, TCM rocks. I love that. You know, we're helping people uh, and changing lives and really putting a huge emphasis on our community mm -hmm. and, you know, how much they mean to us because, they, it, yeah, we couldn't do it without them, really. Anissa, Anissa Redman wants to drop out of school and become a <laughs> Fan, TCM fangirl, like uh, almost famous, like that group. Yep, let's uh, you go. Know? <laughs> go for it. So no, it's it's super cool. Shout out to the Run CMD hat from Professor Black Ops. Need some of that in his life. I love it. Uh, yeah. Here's a really good question um, that you know we don't see very often because oftentimes we're thinking about people getting in. T asks, I you know I have the PNPT. How will the new courses be offered to us? Um, so if you already have the PMPT, you've probably, you've either purchased the material um, or maybe you had um, like all access pass, but all of the material is just being updated within the courses. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's any new course or any new material that's associated with the PMPT, that will be updated within like the current courses that we have. You know, if and when there's like a new version of the PMPT, like a more advanced version of the PMPT, that would be like different, obviously. Um, so we'll, that's still like being talked about, work, worked through and things like that. But for what's coming up currently, um, all of that will be updated within uh, the current courses that we have. So like the PEH, the OSINT course, the mm -hmm. uh, Linux, Privesk, Windows Privesk, and the uh, Pentest Playbook. They're being updated? 
they will be updated with, with any new material. Um, oh yeah, yeah. As we see and, fit to, to go along with, you know, just the updates that we're making. Sorry. And, and, and no, no, it's all good. And just so people know, I, I haven't shared this publicly, but it's going to affect you as well. Um, I'm, I'm making two major updates to the GRC course in the third week of December. So between December 15th and December 23rd, um, there, there will be a, a significant update um, to, cool. to the audit and the risk lab. So, hey. yeah. So updates get, are fun. Like people love to see updates. Like that's, you know, and we try to do that as often as we can. Like I said, Heath just updated all of our Python stuff um, in the PEH. So, you know, we, we try to make sure things are up to date, accurate. And uh, if things change, um, like I know there's like one thing, like one service is going away. I keep forgetting what it is. There's some free service that we have featured in like the, the practical ethical hacking. Uh, and we feature that as part of like our training and it, but it's no longer going to be free. So we have to like, we're going to have to rework that when it's no longer available. So, mm -hmm. you know, when things break and things get or, or get updated, like we we're pretty on top of that and making sure that, you know, we're up yeah. to date with all those things. Yeah, also. that's a, that's appreciative because nothing's worse than like doing a course and it's like go here and you get like a 404 and you're like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Right? Yeah, no, we, we stay on top of that pretty well. Um, and we have, you know, we have an amazing help desk team um, at TCM. So like anytime something's wrong, like, you know, people are reporting it right away and our help mm -hmm. desk team is on it, like ASAP. And, uh, you know, that's one thing I think we stand above the rest also and our support, our, sub our just team of support is phenomenal and getting back to people and helping them and just providing any type of help and or feedback that we can. Oh, that's awesome. I, I love it. Um, I love it, man. It, it's a great company. I mean, there's a reason why it's um, growing the way it is and, and you're seeing it in chat. Yeah. It's a mix of like looking cool and being cool. It's great content and you guys are consistent in your delivery and your, I, I would say you're consistent in your promise to the student and you're consistent in the delivery on that promise um with with high quality and you know it's like it's like anything else like yeah you can have a slick marketing campaign in dark mode everything uh but if your product sucks you know word's gonna get out right unless you're just dumping more money into marketing right yeah i'm laughing at somebody's comment right now too uh Which one? i i don't want to say because there's obvious reasons but it's just funny because oh. it's, it's exactly to to something i said and why i said it so, oh, I see. That, I that see. That person will know who I, what I'm talking about. Yes, I, I, I recognize it. Uh, some people are suggesting it's the Heroku or the phone book, um, phone book ones. Um, Christopher Colum Colombo asks a good question. He's almost done with the PNP tor PNPT course. Uh, should he wait for the update or take it before the end of the year? Good question. Um, I don't think it really matters at this point, honestly. Like if you. If you wait till we push out the update, um, when every, like the new stuff comes, like you're not going to get access. And I think he was disabling that on the 23rd, if I recall correctly, um, that we're not going to be giving like free hints to. So if you fail your exam the first time, um, right now as it stands, if you fail, like we'll give you a hint and say like, hey, here's something you know X, Y, and Z that could potentially help you get to that next step. Um, but moving forward with the way that the exam is going to work, since every time you experience the exam, it's going to essentially be randomized, right? Um, we're not going to be giving uh, hints any longer. So that's kind of like the biggest difference that you're going to to see, uh, whether you know you you wait or you schedule now, essentially. But uh, there's, I would have to look at like the information that Heath sent. I don't know it off like top of my head. But if you look out on social or if you're you're joined with uh joined on our discord um in our announcements he details everything and it's detailed on like our linkedin and things like that also i love it um so we've got about five minutes left so just to kind of set everybody's expectations and, and get going um you know it, again talking about cyber education right we're, we're talking a lot about um you know pr professionals and stuff like that do you do you have any thoughts around um, like K through 12 and the education challenges there. Is it even a good idea? Is it, is it a bad idea? Is, should it be part of STEM? Should it be like STEM C, you know, or, or work out and work out a new acronym for you say that one more time now. What I, like I'm talking about educating K through 12. Cause like for the longest time, undergraduate bachelor's degree programs, 
even technical ones did nothing for security. And then it became a thing 20 years ago. And now, you know, there's degrees. But if you go into K through 12, you know, pe people aren't even getting basic education around cyber, right? They're getting a little bit of IT. Well, and, and yeah. If you go to like California, they have like this mayor's cup thing. And that's that's high school kids hacking, like doing CTF competitions against each other. And it's like huge. Oh, so like there are uh, there are actually are like a lot of K through 12 um, schools that are participating in different types of cyber programs. And I know like there's this company called um, Circadence that I did a lot of work with. And they're much like um, the the haiku um, place. It's like gamified cybersecurity yeah. training, right? Yeah. Um, they did a lot of work with school districts, uh, K through 12. Um, so it's, it's out there. It's just, you know, it, it's not as well known and you probably see it in more, uh, probably, you know, like affluent areas, I would guess, because you, you're going to have a lot more funding and, you know, school districts are notorious for being underfunded in so many ways. So oh my God, yeah. it's just one of those things that, you know, it, you're not going to find it everywhere. I wish it was everywhere. Um, and hopefully like organizations like, you know, TCM security can make it a more affordable for, you know, K through 12 to take advantage of some training that, you know, students can, can actually utilize and, and learn these, these tools and skills. Yeah. Josh men mentions that TCM had hidden about doing some K through 12 stuff. I don't know if you know anything or have any public updates that you could share around that or if not, not right now. Um, we're always trying to work with school. I, I, so I, a lot of the, like my personal experience working in it comes from working in school districts. So that's like something I'm extremely passionate about. We just got into a uh, community college um, as part of like a, like a, an offering through them. So that's like our first venture into like the, uh, you know, educational space and that, that I guess sense. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm always open and looking for opportunities to work through with K through 12 more. Yeah, and just I just want to answer this question really quick. Justin Loken asks if you already have the GRC course on Simply CyberSite, can you get it on the TCM for the logo? Uh, unfortunately, they are two two different um, product. They're the same exact course, but they're two different products, Justin. So it um, unfortunately, if you want that logo, um, you know there's, there there might be a Black Friday deal <laughs> coming. Uh, Lisa mentioned Cyber Patriot, which is another middle school and high school um, mm -hmm. hacking competition, and I, I actually have heard about that. So it almost seems like it's more club. Like, I don't know about this mayor's cup if it's more club, but there's no, there's no like hard curriculum. Um, but you know, if there's club, maybe it'll, it'll start getting that way. Yeah. I know like for a long time here and I live in a town, like I live in a very small area, um, but we have like a, uh, like a career center um, and a, like a local hub for like some of the schools in our area um, for like the high school kids, but they would go, like they travel to that, to bus every day where they do more specialized training and we they offered in that like uh a plus security plus net plus and like ccna and then back then like microsoft certifications um and that was for high school kids so i mean even in a small area like mine like we had like some career focused like services like that um but they don't do it anymore that i know of or it's not as popular as it used to be which is really frustrating but i live yeah, in like that... farm country so yeah, that that is that is frustrating. Uh, that is most most frustrating as the demand comes higher and as even as um, uh, training becomes more and more affordable. And I'm not even talking about infosec training in like pl places like TCM or Simply Cyber. Uh, just IT, like cloud is cloud is a very very popular area right now. Lots of businesses are moving to the cloud or exclusively in the cloud. And if you go to like Microsoft Azure or Amazon AWS, and I don't know. For, I don't know if this is true or not, but I would assume Google Cloud, at least on Amazon and Microsoft, you can take all of their training for free. They will lay out the career path. They'll explain everything to you. And I think their certifications are priced pretty cheap. Like they're priced so basically people don't spam them, but they're not priced to break you. I think it's like 50 bucks for like the entry level Azure uh, exam. And maybe it goes up to 250 for like the, you know, the, the architect ones. Um, so yeah, there is, I don't, I don't think they break the bank by any means. No, not at all. So, I mean, it, I guess what I'm saying is it's too bad, uh, that these programs you're talking about are not there because the curriculum is there for yeah. free. You know what I mean? Since K, K through 12 notoriously are underfunded, um, as well. Right. Yeah. So, all right. We are just about a time. Dude, this was like the fastest hour, um, 
I know. Um, did we talk about everything we were supposed to? I don't even. Well, know. Well, I mean, if you want to do a, a rapid fire round, because I wanted, I wanted to have some fun uh, pop, you know, uh, potpourri time with you, Zach. I we always right, talk shop. We always... All right, ready? Um, let's see. Black Friday deals, like like not TCM, like Zach Hill Black Friday deals. What do you What are you looking for? What are you smashing F five on? Oh man. I don't even, I can't even really say it's like a secret. I don't know. I shouldn't say. Oh, really all shouldn't. right. No, there's yeah. things, I guess. No, not really. I don't know. I don't care all about right. anything, honestly. I I'm am like trying to think of something, but really, like, I just, I don't know. When I see something that I want, I typically, like, I'm like, I, I have to, like, I spend a lot of time weighing out, like, do I want to buy that? So, like, Black Friday usually has no effect on me because, like, I'll see it. I still have to weigh out the pros and cons. And by the time I get through that process, I already missed out on the Black Friday sale. So I try not to pay attention. Well, okay, no problem. I am, I'm also don't really uh, pay too much attention to Black Friday, but I will say that I recently made a studio, like my studio video or whatever, and I did it in like a vlog style. And now I'm like, oh, I kind of like this vlog style. So I'm looking for uh, like a Sony ZV-1. I'm looking for a vlog camera because right. I did I did the vlogging with my Sony A6400, which weighs like 80 pounds. And I'm just like, I might as well have been holding a folding chair by the leg. I was just like, oh you know so they, they make very nice stabilizers for those and i have one so yes i know i like see when i see yeah like i just bought the new like a, a new sure mic because it was on sale like i wasn't yeah. even gonna wait for black friday just like i really want that and, and like i've been wanting it for so long that I, I saw it on sale and i knew the next time i saw it on sale i was gonna buy it and i was like i'm not even gonna wait for black friday yeah like i just want it right now I, I, okay, I mean Black Friday is next week, and yesterday I bought a Stream Deck XL because <laughs> because Aaron KG sent me a link, and he's like, "It's fifty bucks off." I'm like, "Done." I I don't even use mine. I'm looking at it right now. I don't even <laughs> use it. Just sitting there. Just like I got the. I finally got a flipper. Right. Yes. I'm like, oh yes, I'm gonna use it, and I still I haven't even I've turned it on, and that's it. Flipper like, buddies, you got to put a custom uh uh oh firmware on it. Like they make all sorts of crazy different OSs. I okay. know. Let, let's keep on the on the rapid okay. fire. Okay, Th thoughts on the crypto winter or FTX or what or just the crypto scene in general? Any 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 thoughts on it? It's just wild, man. Like, it, I don't know where to start with it, and I don't want to start with it because it's just dumb. Honestly, like, what, I can't say anything other than the whole thing. Well, everything that's happening with it is just so dumb. Like, honestly, <laughs> it really is. It's like the it's the largest macro level Ponzi scheme yeah. in history. It's, so. it's just like it, pro it makes so many people like feel validated in saying that like crypto is just a big scam. And that's the biggest issue that I see from it is mm -hmm. that I, I don't like that it has that it, it's going to have like that kind of even more of a bad rap than it did. Right. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's frustrating. Yeah, it is. It is. All right. Uh, we had one last question. I think Gaming with the Cat asked it. Are you into that was, anime? That was all the rapid fire stuff? I'm sorry. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I have a couple oh. others, but I, like, okay. okay, so anime, I don't, you have I a don't. favorite character? I'm, I don't. I'm sorry. No, it's good. Uh, Hold on. I'm going to play a fin frog sound really quick. I'm a crypto evangelist. I love it, love it, love it. That's that's a, a friend of the show, Charles Finfrock. He's all in on that. All right. Okay. So a couple more quick fire questions, like like two more minutes. Um, so sh should you have a wildly successful YouTube channel? I have a fledgling YouTube channel. We we both have thoughts on this. Should should someone become a content creator in 2022? Oh God. Um, I don't. I would never tell anybody not to do something they didn't want to do. Right? Like that's kind of how I feel about that. I, I would okay. never tell somebody. I would never some like steer them away from it. But if their goal, like, is to be a content creator, it's going to be very, very difficult to do in yeah, 2023. It, it takes a lot of conviction. Uh, are you going to stay on Twitter? Uh, yeah, for sure. 100%. I can't wait okay. for it to do whatever it does. And I'll be there the entire time because I honestly do not care. Yeah. Like, dude can do he can do whatever he wants with his money it's his money i don't care it's a free platform i don't pay a dime for it like mm -hmm. whatever happens happens like let dude do whatever he wants with his dollars and that's it i mean 
Okay, that's, that's fine. That, that, I'll just that's sit there fine. and chill and let it all unfold. That's well, um, would you pay eight bucks for a blue check mark? Uh, I haven't decided that yet. I'm waiting to see what happens, honestly. Okay. How does how does dead how does Wild West Hackenfest stack in your uh your order of conferences with like the top being like gotta go must go um conferences? It's hands down the best IT conference I've ever been to in my entire life. Honestly, yeah. 100%. Like I I really truly honestly hope that we go back next year because that entire experience is something that I will I will cherish for my entire life, honestly. And I got to meet, like, I got to meet you there in person for the first yep. time. Josh Mason, Mason, I got to meet him there in person for this first time. Like, there's so many amazing people that I got to meet in in person for the very first. Like, it was just like, it was everything that I think I could have uh, wanted. I think out of a conference experience, on top of like just meeting the people, just the experience itself was so unique, and it was such like a chill, like cool. Like just experience, I guess. I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I hope uh, Black Hills comes in and like sound clips that for for themselves. <laughs> Chill and cool is absolutely the way to describe it. Uh, I, I asked the question because it is my favorite conference, and I even got like like clapped back by DefCon on Twitter. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, "What the heck?" I was like, "I I agree with you, Jerry." I'm sorry. Like, but a great, great conference. If y'all get a chance to get out there, it is. It is. You know, it is a hike to get there, but like you have to want to get there to to go. But I'm telling you, it's an absolute dynamite conference. A lot of fun, a lot of education, a lot of sharing. They have a lot of peripheral stuff going on that's like community driven. Um, it's just super cool. Um, there's a lot so, of hills. Yeah, there is a lot of hills. A lot, there of, is hills. lot of hills. So many hills. I, lost, I love it. I legitimately lost ten pounds while I was there because of all the walking up and down hills. Wow. Oh, wow. Just, All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. You know, so get a workout and see some great sights. I love it. Yeah, it was cool. So, Josh, Best as experience we... of my life. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. I, I you, hope you to see you call again me next Josh year. now. That's so funny. What's that? You just call me Josh. And it's did so it? funny. Yeah, because everybody calls me Josh. Oh, that's weird. I didn't even realize I did it. I, I've been calling you Zach all day here. No, I know. So, it's, it, I'll... Never mind. Go ahead. All right, man. No problem. So as, as, we, as we round it out... Um, you know, I just want to give you a final opportunity to say your piece, say whatever you'd like, uh, take the floor, and then uh, we will say goodbye to everybody. Oh, okay, so, so everybody said you did. See, you call me Josh. I, I just have to, I'll end it with this, is because my brother's name is Josh. So my entire life, I'm used to like my dad calling me Josh or just random people for whatever reason calling me Josh. I have no idea why. So like when we did our physical penetration test last year, I made up a badge, right? And I wanted, like, if somebody was going to call me out, like, by the name on my badge, I wanted to be like, something that I would recognize and respond to. So this badge that I use for this physical pen test has the name Joshua on it because I've been called that my entire life, and I would respond to it. So, nice. You've been doing, that. you know, whatever, 30, 30 plus years of uh, preparation for your social engineering attacks. I love right? the commitment. I love the commitment. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. I, um, I have them here. Sorry. No, it's good. So, Zach, if someone wants to connect with you, uh, what's the best way? LinkedIn, Twitter? Uh, yeah, LinkedIn for sure. LinkedIn.com slash in slash I am nerdy. Or you All right. me up with Zach Hill. Zach Hill, I am nerdy. I love it. Guys, this has been a wonderful conversation. Special thanks to our special, very special guest, Zach Hill <laughs> um, from TCM Security. Continue doing the great work that you're doing. Zach, I, I appreciate it. I know the whole community appreciates it. Chat, you guys were awesome tonight. Uh, bring in the heat, good engagement, great vibes. Um, really, really appreciate it. Stefan, Stefan's like one of the first people to, 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 uh, to tweet or, or to chat and then one of the last ones too. So I absolutely love that. Guys, be good. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. for the uh, Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. Until then, stay good. We'll see you tomorrow.